حضرت ابو الحسن خکانی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کی نقش بندی شیخ سیٹ صوفی ازم واز ونس اے ریالٹی ود آؤٹ نیم اینڈ ناؤ صوفی ازم از نیم ود آؤٹ ریالٹی فار مینی سینچریز صوفی ازم ایگزسٹڈ ود آؤٹ نیم اٹ ایگزسٹڈ ایز ریالٹی اونلی دیٹ از وائی آئی سی دیٹ از وائی آئی سی جیسس was a Sufi, so was Muhammad, so was Mahabir, so was Krishna. Anyone who has come to know God, come to be God, is indeed a Sufi. Why do I say so? Try to understand the word Sufi and it will become clear to you. The word Sufi is a new coinage. It is of German origin. It emerged out of German scholarship, is not more than 150 years old. In Arabic, the word is tasawwuf, but both come from a root suf, which means wool. It seems very strange. Why should wool become the symbol of Sufism? The scholars go on saying, that it is because Sufis used to wear woolen robes. The scholars go on saying that it is because Sufis used to wear woolen robes. That is true, but why? Sufis have been wearing woolen robes. Holy Prophet Hazrat Pagambar says in Holy Quran that even Moses was wearing a woolen robe when he encountered God. When God spoke to him, he was entirely in a woolen robe. But why? There is a deep symbolism in it. The symbolism is that wool is the garb of animals. And a Sufi has to become as innocent as an animal. The Sufi has to attain to primal innocence. This Sufi has to attain to primal innocence. He has to drop all kinds of civilizations. He has to drop all kinds of cultures. He has to drop all conditionings and thus has to become again innocent like an animal. Then the symbol becomes tremendously significant. But it is not so. Each Sufi fold imposes the ways and means, the etiquette, this is how one should act, behave, wear clothes, etc. And in that, the very essence of Sufism is lost. The very essence of Sufi is lost. Sufism means one has to become innocent, like an animal, then symbol becomes tremendously significant. When man becomes animal, he does not fall back as is normally conceived. When man becomes innocent like an animal, this is a conscious choice. Someone asked Jesus, who can enter the kingdom of my thy father? Jesus responded, one who is childlike. Childlike innocence we cherish. Jesus did not say one who is childish. Childlike innocence is very significant. When man becomes animal, he does not fall back as is normally conceived. Instead, he goes higher. When man becomes animal, he is not just an animal. That is not possible. You have not regressed. You cannot fall back. When a man becomes an animal, he becomes a saint. His becoming an animal is his conscious choice. He remains conscious, but his consciousness is no more burdened by any condition. He is no more a Hindu and no more a Mohammedan and no more a 
Christian. He is in tune with existence as deeply as an animal. He has dropped all kinds of philosophies. No more conceptualizations in his mind. Mind is without any content. He is, but he is no more in the mind. To be like innocent animals is the very meaning of woolen robe. He is no more in the duality of what is good and what is bad. Only then the highest good, the absolute good arises. This is Samam Vanam, the ultimate good. And that is the reason that wool is used as a symbol for Sufism. And the green color, which is omnipresence of the nature's prolific group. When you know this is good and that is bad, and you choose good against bad, you remain divided. This is duality. When you choose, there is repression. When you say, I will do this, this has to be done, this should be done, this becomes an ought. Then naturally you have to repress. You have to repress that which you have condemned as bad. And the repressed part remains inside you and goes on poisoning your system. And sooner or later it will assert itself. Sooner or later it will take revenge. When it explodes, it will surface even without your knowing. You will go mad. Hence all civilized people are always on the verge of madness. The earth is a big madhouse. A few have already become mad, while a few are potentially ready. The difference between you and the mad people is not of quality. It is only of quantity. The difference is only of degree. Maybe they have gone beyond the hundred degrees and you are just lingering somewhere near nineties. Any situation can push you beyond the boundary. Don't you see it? Can't you observe your mind? Can't you see the madness that goes on and on inside? It is continuously there, waiting for the opportunity to explode. To me, to be an animal means to be innocent. Innocence is spontaneous and natural. It knows no morality or immorality. To be an animal is not a condemnation. A saint is more like animals than like you. The difference between a master and you is his innocence and spontaneity. He is both innocent and spontaneous. That is why he is more like an animal than like the so-called human beings. The human beings are not natural. They are very unnatural. They are artificial, plastic-like. Their whole life is a life of deception. If you touch somebody's face, you will never touch the face. You will touch only his mask. And remember, your hand is not true either. It has gloves on it. Even lovers do not touch each other. Even in love you are not innocent. Even in love you are not without masks. But when you want to love God, you have to be without masks. You have to drop all deceptions. You have to be authentically whatsoever you are. In that primal innocence God descends. So the reason Idrisha finds to condemn the definition that Sufi comes from Suf is exactly the reason I approve. You avoid it, 
you get occupied in thousand and one things just to avoid it. You do not look at it. You want to forget about it. It is too scary and frightening, but it is there. And when you avoid it or not, it goes on growing. It is continuously accumulating momentum. It can come to the peak any time. Any small thing can trigger it. When you choose, you have to repress. The animal does not choose whatsoever is actually is. The animal simply accepts it. Its acceptance is total. It knows no choice. So does a Sufi. A Sufi knows no choice. He is choicelessly aware. Whatsoever happens, he accepts it as a gift as a God-given thing. Who is he to choose? He does not trust his mind. Instead he trusts in the universal mind. That is why when you come across a Sufi, you will see such animal innocence in his eyes and in his being. There is an expression of such freedom, such joy, as only animals should or trees or rocks or the stars manifest. Idris Shah has condemned the definition of Sufi from Suf, Wool, on exactly the same grounds as I am approving of it. He says that Sufis are so alert about symbols, how can they choose Wool as a symbol? Wool represents the animal and Sufis cannot choose animal as a symbol. They are the people of God. Why should they choose the animal? He seems very logical. He may appeal to many people. But on exactly the same grounds I approve the definition. It needs deeper insight into the whole phenomenon that is Sufism. You need to know the very essence of Sufism. You have to be a Sufi to know this. You have to be in the ocean like a fish to know what is ocean. You have to dive deep in the womb of the ocean to explore the inner treasures of the unknown. You have never known such treasures. This is the rare experience. Sufism is such rare experience. Idrisha has done tremendous work in creating a Sufi character in Mullah Nasruddin. Through this character he has hit human ignorance and unconsciousness. I love him for this. But I do not accept when he says about the symbol of animal as the symbol for Sufism. Animal symbolizes innocence. It is the quality of the animal that is the symbol of Sufism. This is the reason Sufis have chosen this symbol. It is natural and spontaneous choice. I have heard once a dog bit a man who was in the Sufi garb. At this, the man hit the dog with a stick. Then the dog went to the city chief to lodge the complaint against the man who had hit him with the stick. The chief, who is called, according to the Muslim law, Qazi, called the two parties together. He listened to the plaintiff and the defender. Now it was the time for the judgment. The dog bit the man and then the man hit the dog with his stick. The chief said, this is squares the situation. Surprised, the chief asked the dog, why was he complaining when he bit the man first? Because you bit the man and this is the reason that the man hit you back. The case is squared now. There is no case then. 
But then the chief got surprised when the dog said that his complaint was not against the man who hit him. The dog said, when I saw this man in a Sufi garb, I bit him to test if he is really a Sufi, the innocent one. But this man is a deceit in Sufi garb. Sufi is bound to be innocent one. Sufi is the one who cannot harm anyone. My complaint is that this man is deceiving as a Sufi. Such was the time when no one could deceive in a Sufi garb. Now the situation is different and you can see what it is happening. I do not know if this happened really, but the parable gives a very important message. Such is Sufi way. That is how we go on living. All our religion is like that, just verbal. It does not penetrate into your being and you know that whatsoever you say, you do exactly the opposite of it. You think one thing, say another and do something else. You are a trinity, you are not one. And all those three persons are going in three different directions. You are a crowd. And this is the cause of your misery. The animal is one. This is the cause of the blissfulness of the animal. The animal has nothing whatsoever to be happy about. He has not a big place to live in. He has no television, no radio. And all that you consider entertainment. He has nothing and yet you will find great peace, silence, joy and celebration while one thing is there, the animal is not a chooser, the Sufi is not a chooser, choose and you deceive, choose and you start going false, choose and you become plastic.